Um, so I had a request that uh, someone wanted help with uh, making an enemy spawn and basically follow path nodes and I'll kind of give you insight into other things that you can do with them or how you can make them spawn. So what I have set up here is a simple trigger area, uh, a player start, some path nodes and uh, I have an enemy that is set to inactive. Um, I'm going to go through this step by step how to do it. So basically what's going to happen in this is when I'm touching this red script box, uh, script spawn enemy one, he's going to become active. Uh, so I'll just go over this and we'll basically show you how to do it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an area, a uh, script area, make sure in the top right it's a script area. So then we're going to select it. And we're going to name it something useful. Um, I recommend keeping SCR in there just so later on you don't get uh, names confused and use it twice. Uh, trust me, it'll pay you off if you get this out of the way early when you're coding because if you have a duplicate of something later on, it becomes a big problem. So I'm going to call this uh, enemy spawner one. Or, yeah, whatever. Uh, one, there we go. Okay. So then I'm going to go into areas again and I'm going to scroll down to the top right here and get a player start. Um, and I'm just going to click and pop it in right there and move it up so we're not in the ground and uh, I believe it's whatever blue is facing forward, yeah, I think so the blue arrow makes it face forward oh, come on, there we good enough next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add an entity over here somewhere around here uh, just, so, just so he doesn't start too close to us, just chases us um, so then, yeah, we go back to areas go down to path node and so we just pull up these down wherever we want them basically right wherever you want him to basically be following uh, I'd recommend putting one basically where the guy starts um, I'll show you so I'll get an enemy out here so he's one of entities um, where are our enemies come on enemy and we'll just take a brute and we'll stick him right on top of that one so he's close so you can identify with it from, through the scripting which I'll show you um, the next important thing you want to do is set it to unactive unless you want it to just be patrolling the path nodes upon spawning but this is how you spawn you have to keep him inactive and then you activate him via a script which I'm going to now show you so basically we have everything set up the way we want and uh, I think I want to make sure it's the same name as this so, I'm going to change my script name to scrap. script spawn enemy one camel case with the E. Yeah, it says, no, so let's delete that. Anyway, so there, there's our setup, and now I'm going to show you what the coding looks like. Uh, I guess I can just leave it like this. Um, so, I'm assuming that you already have your map set up and ready to go, and this be put into the same file location. Name it the same thing as your actual map file, just so you don't lose it for... It looks... so it's tidy, anyways. So basically we're gonna add an entity collide callback. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna check when you're touching a certain object, and what is touching, touching a certain object, and then what script is gonna be happening, and is it like... can it happen only once? So like true so this is like number of times it can happen or whatever I think that's what it does and this is uh, if it goes to being de deactivated basically after it's triggered um, so this is what is going to be hitting it so stat stock you don't have to change it if you want if it's you who are hitting it you just keep it player and what are you hitting that box we made the script the script enemy the red box and what is it going to be doing it's going to be spawn enemy one and now if we go back into the editor uh, the enemy, make sure we call it uh, the same name as what I don't know. So, enemy one. Okay. Yeah, get out of there. I'll just delete all these other things that I don't need. God damn. 
And we'll just... Actually, you know, I'll leave those path nodes because they're referencing to that script already. And it'll just be faster that way. And I'll move him over there. Okay. So, and then in... So what's going to happen? What function? This is right here, the spawn enemy one. This is what function do we want to happen, right? And the function that we want to happen is the enemy spawning and also staying on the path if we aren't in the vicinity of him. Uh, this is your constructor. Uh, there's many other versions of like how, what you can add in these scripts or many different things or different ways to collide with them. I'll go over that in later. But for now, this is basically what, what sets the enemy to be active, to exist. Uh, set enemy active. And what do you want to exist? The name that we call an enemy one. And uh, is do you want it to be true? So basically, yes. And then this is just patrol node. This is where you, what do you want to follow a node and what node and how long do you want there to be a pause in between this creature or thing moving in between those nodes and uh, for the first one I have him walking fast to the second one and then pausing for uh, 30 frames which is half a second 60, fr 60 frames is a second and uh, you don't need to worry about this make sure it's in here though for your level um, hopefully you, you kind of have some familiarity with some of the scripting by now um, so with that done, that will pretty much have it set up and completed. So just as I said, make sure you name these things correctly. See now this has changed. So enemy one, that is the what I want to be spawned as active. And make sure you have the same nodes in the area. And make sure your things are named properly. Oh, God. Which I will do now. Okay, and that is that, and uh, so then you can save the map, and then you can run it. Okay, so after you've um, tested that out, um, it should work. Uh, I had to change some things, because uh, I just didn't name these things properly when compared to my script. Just remember, see, I had this as something else. Um, make sure that these things are the same names as what you put in the actual editor otherwise you're just gonna have you're gonna have a bad time and uh, so that is that um, so another example of how you can get these done is um, first I, I would recommend going to the actual frictional uh, amnesia editor uh, wiki you can just google that and it should be like one of the first things that comes up by the frictional games and uh, they have like a whole ton of stuff on the hpl2 editor and where you can learn functions um, there's different ways that you can get enemies to spawn like say you don't want it to have a collide into something to like like an area trigger um, there's other things you could have like for instance uh, you could have it where you're basically if you interact with an object so there's interact callbacks too and they're, they're also pretty useful and they're good for other things as well I use them a lot more for other things I tend to spawn my enemies on locations rather than picking up objects but uh, that all depends on you and uh, what you're doing or what you want to do so if you say for instance you wanted it to th this to happen oh I'll just do okay so say you wanted this script to happen when you picked an object okay so to do that, we're going to use the add, ent er, add entity player interact callback, uh, or not that. Well, anyway, let's set. Ah, can't spell. Set entity player interact callback. Make sure you type these things perfectly. Okay, so that is that. And then we just need to tell it what we want to activate. Uh, so first we'll go back, we'll go back into the editor and uh, we'll just move this out of the way and we'll go into our entities and just pick any object that you could pick up or something like uh, a bottle. Maybe. Okay, so let's throw that on the ground. Pretty sure you can pick those up. And we'll just copy this name, Control C, and we'll go back into our notepad, and we're gonna have it say 
when we interact with this object in parentheses or uh, quotations, my bad, separated by a comma, and uh, what you want to happen. So the same script will say spawn enemy, or exactly what we have below. This is the script we want to run. Ah, come on. Spawn. Ah, the one on my keyboard is giving me hell. It doesn't seem to work properly. Make sure again to keep it in quotations. And then we want to say true, basically, so that it happens and only happens once. Okay, so now, basically, if you run the game, when you do that, when you touch the object, that enemy will spawn. Um, and there's also lots of room where you can add things in here, so don't be afraid to add other parts in here, uh, like, say, causing the camera to shake. Uh, I'll, I'll probably do a video tutorial on timers, because that's also something that is very useful to know, and how to create uh, more advanced effects in the HBL2 editor, such as like jump scare moments where there's dust flying around, and then you have to time it to cut it off and turn it off, right, or add screaming and stuff like that. Um, let me know if you guys want that. I mean, I'm more than down, happy to do so. Um, but I hope you guys learned something and got some examples. Um, as I say, I can't stress it enough. Make sure you name the things exactly what you name them in the editor. And you use the same names for these objects that you're interacting with or you're colliding with. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed that and I wish you success.